In today's video, we're going to be diving into the upcoming pattern and primarily talking about Tropical Storm Aaron, which is expected to at least become Hurricane Aaron and pretty likely Major Hurricane Aaron. This one poses a threat to the entire Caribbean, entire Gulf, entire East Coast, and that goes for the US and Canada, as well as Bermuda. This one is really, really early in its development, and it's also very far back in what we call the MDR or main development region, which means that this one has a long time to go and a long track, which means that every scenario is pretty much possible at this point. This morning, looking at satellite imagery, this storm has struggled, which you might think is a good thing, right? The storm is struggling. It's a little weaker. We don't want it to be strong. But the thing is, is that oftentimes stronger storms have a tendency to curve northward. Weaker storms have a tendency to kind of just meander. And when we're talking about a track like this one, that is a very bad thing. So it being stronger earlier on would actually probably be better uh, for any impacts in, again, the Caribbean, Gulf, East Coast areas uh, than this weaker system that could just meander its way in developing much later. So let's go ahead and take a look at a wider view of the cone forecast and some model guidance for this one. Now, as we can see, we're seeing the GFS model guidance on screen for what it projects to happen uh, as far as this storm. And you can see it does curve out to sea. As of now, it becomes a very strong storm in this area, mostly uh, towards the end here. These numbers on screen is going to be the National Hurricane Center's forecast for this one. Uh, now, keep in mind, again, this is very, very far out, and it could easily move into the Gulf impact the east coast in some shape or form you know kind of scrape by the east coast and impact coastal canada this one could even slide underneath where we're even thinking it to, it should go uh so really there's a wide 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 variety of potential scenarios with this one and our confidence in the track only lasts about this far after that point is when things get really really hairy because it's many days out and a lot can change We've even seen the models change significantly from yesterday morning to last evening to this morning. We've seen a pretty big back and forth battle. Uh, most models were much further southward showing potential impacts for these areas uh, just last evening. The morning before, we saw much more curvature way out to sea. And now this morning, we're seeing a lot more of this out to sea stuff again. So. It is a very back and forth battle. We're going to be monitoring this one very closely, but just because you're seeing it way out to sea, I don't want that to make you guys think that these areas are 100% not going to see any impacts from this system because that couldn't be any further from the truth. Now, again, that curvature I was talking about a minute ago, I want to get back to that because we can see kind of the screen now and we see a great example of it here, but it gets really strong right in this area stronger than even what the National Hurricane Center is showing, in my opinion, probably, you know, category two or three in this range where it's showing one or two. And that's why we get this really quick curvature here out to sea. If it stays weaker, that's when you could be talking about something that just slides right into the Bahamas, which would put the Gulf and Southeast coasts on high alert, uh, as well as obviously Florida. Uh, we're going to be watching this one extremely, extremely closely, but I do want to move us into our European model guidance where we will go over the general storminess around the nation as well as what that model has to say about this hurricane. And then we're going to take a look at the spaghetti model guidance for this one and the intensity guidance for this one according to all the models. Now, as we just take a look at some of that general storms, uh, this is by this late afternoon. And we can see a relatively stormy day is on the way. We have a lot of moisture around uh, kind of intruding in on this southeast area. I feel like it's been so long since I've talked about the upcoming pattern. We do have a stronger low south of the Hudson Bay that is bringing a cold front as well. So we have this kind of warm, humid sector with thunderstorms down here. And then we have this cold front that's bringing with it its own form of thunderstorms. 
this is all coming while warmer air rushes up the western states so that's why we end up with a trough over the central areas of the united states looking towards wednesday afternoon we will have a smaller trough overall for the entire east here as things look to generally dip into this area which will mean slightly below normal temperatures compared to what's typical for this time of year and a lot of storminess as that cold front rolls through that's by wednesday let's take a look at thursday here on the 14th and again the still just this eastern area dealing with some storms in there friday afternoon on the 15th we see mostly the four corner states here some of the pacific northwest getting some storms and even uh, your southeast and deep south corridors there seeing some thunderstorm activity but overall by this weekend it looks a lot less active overall there's just these smaller clusters of areas of thunderstorms occurring not the overall like half the nation dealing with you know scattered thunderstorms like we saw for the days prior a little bit of another frontal boundary starts to set up by the time we're looking at sunday on the 17th where some cooler air is trying to dip into the east again and we also see this warmth putting up a really good fight against it though and you get that squeeze effect which causes rising motion in the atmosphere and flares up a lot of thunderstorms along the line that's exactly what we're seeing here also these areas are just dealing with a lot of humidity and thunderstorms overall as we keep going towards monday uh, that's going to be on the 18th we finally can see our hurricane on screen here it's a nine can't tell what it is actually it's so many circles happening there but by monday it'll be north of dominican republic north of haiti likely as we keep going towards tuesday afternoon you can certainly see it on screen now a uh, very intense hurricane i i need to zoom in on this um just to take a look here we're gonna have to switch the model runs up but i'm just kind of confused about the intensity here Oh man, we're gonna have to pick a different viewpoint. We're kind of going off script here, guys. I apologize. Let's take a look at the. Let's see if this helps. There we go. I believe that says nine thirty-six millibars there, if I'm not mistaken, which is absolutely insane. Uh, there, just to the east of the Bahamas. So let's go back to the United States view here, and take a look at what happens by Wednesday because this one is. A lot further west and it is flirting with these eastern states as you can see it's getting way 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 too close for comfort but it is a very intense storm so we will see if there is enough curvature uh sending it back offshore but look at this thing i mean that is barreling towards the outer banks and the mid-atlantic in general and then just curves last minute this is 10 days away uh, right here what we're looking at this is 10 days from now so obviously that is the long range obviously there's a lot of time for things to change and we just have to hope that it continues to push further and further eastward instead of pushing more towards that east coast to the west that'd be very very bad um because overall this is way too close for comfort especially with how much time there is left the one consistency we're seeing from almost every single model is that they all show this being a very intense and very dangerous hurricane and that's enough to know really when we have again this much time and this much uncertainty about the track that is the important factor is that this will be a dangerous storm regardless after that storm rolls through we actually do get another major trough in the east for the end of august time frame i know this is a little off topic for this video but maybe colder air still looking to be the trend uh throughout some of august you know back and forth cool downs uh to bring us into meteorological fall which will only be uh four or five days from this point on september 1st i cannot believe we are talking about being in meteorological fall uh within a month i mean absolutely crazy stuff how quick this year is flying by Total precipitation, we will look at Midwest, Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, into the Mid-Atlantic, as well as the Southeast, looks to be some hot spots also nearby the four corner states with some monsoon activity. And obviously, wherever this hurricane goes, there's going to be an exceptional amount of precipitation. Looking at the anomalies here for that precipitation, uh, we can see well above average throughout most of these areas that I highlighted here. Uh, also, here for the four corner states, we can see some above average areas and then wherever this hurricane hits if it hits anywhere hopefully not would have crazy above average precipitation and there's a lot of uncertainty with how much precipitation still because 
a lot of the time we can see hurricanes drop even more than this definitely something that's going to be monitored uh here closely as we just take a look at the spaghetti model guidance for the track we can see that very very many of these are on the southern end compared to the gfs model i want to point that out a lot of these models are a lot closer to puerto rico dominican republic and haiti than the gfs model which was much closer to this grouping which is definitely the outlier at this time showing a wide curvature way to the north i think we have one two three four five models showing this kind of more northern curve and then clearly like at least 15 maybe 20 plus models in there uh, a whole lot of models showing it more south so there is a wide variety of options it does seem like there's two groups mainly the curve curve models and then those more straight models towards generally the west northwest we're going to be watching this very very closely the intensity guidance here uh, is a little bit of a wider variety as well. We do see two major groups, though, one of which ascends straight into like the category three, four status somewhere in there. The other grouping keeps us in this tropical storm status a lot longer over the next three, four, five days, finally bringing us to category one, two or three status by the time it would be getting pretty close to any land or anywhere in the Caribbean or United States. Uh, and these are likely the models that show more of that straight path towards the Caribbean as opposed to the ones that curve north out the sea, which are likely the stronger, uh, more aggressive models with the intensity. We'll be watching this thing extremely, extremely close. Uh, I am very concerned about this system, and this is going to be a very, very common topic for you to hear from me over the coming week to two weeks. With all that being said, be sure to subscribe. We upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.